I captured the town of Teruan, which you called... A dog hole, Majesty. How could you say so? Ah, oh, I've been there. So have I, at the head of an army. You told me I could not lead my own troops. You told me if I was taken prisoner, the ransom would bankrupt the country. So what do you want? Do you want a king to huddle indoors like a sick girl? That would be ideal for fiscal purposes. Ja, det var en kort titt från BBC-serien Wolf Hall som kommer till Sverige. Och det var Thomas Cromwell som talade med Henrik den åttonde. De här böckerna är sålda i massor. Därför att författaren som är prisbelönt, Hilary Mantel, hon har lyckats blåsa liv i historien. Och BBC-serien handlar ju om hennes böcker. Jag fick en intervju med henne här, en exklusiv tv-intervju, som handlade om hennes framgångar, men också om hennes svåra liv, där hon har endometrios, vilket förändrade hennes utseende totalt. Ja, nu har jag ett riktigt celebert besök här i studion. Very welcome, Hilary Mantel. I'm so Thank glad you. that you could come. Thank you. I know it's a quick visit in Sweden mm -hmm. uh, because of your um, memoirs that's coming out, biography. But but it's uh, it's so lovely that you're here. Thank you. Maybe I should call you Lady. Ah, no, Dame Hilary. Or Dame Hilary. Yeah. Tell, maybe you should tell the Swedish audience what, what is going to okay. happen. This is, this is an honour um, from the Queen. And on Friday, um, I'm going to Buckingham Palace to get this honour. And after that, I can be called Dame Hillary. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just a, a nice thing. It, it doesn't have any practical meaning. No. But it is a mark of um, achievement, I suppose, yes. Mm. Mm. And it is tradition, yes. Mm. What does it mean for you? You've been so much into the royal history and... <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it is uh, just a mark of recognition, mm. I think. Mm. It's very nice. Mm. Congratulations. Thank you. Dame is it, <laughs> a very nice <laughs> title. Um, this is called in Swedish Skuggan av ett liv, and, and it's a, a book that is... It's really a story about a little girl that I... When she's little, she's not like the other girls. That's what you no. get. And it's you. It's, it's a me. very special girl. She, she has her own life inside herself, and she has... She wants to be with the boys and not with the girls, and and she's waiting to become a boy when she's little. Yes, I thought that you could change over. The fact that you were a girl didn't mean you had to stay a girl. <laughs> and that when I was four years old, I thought I'll become a boy. So one day I realised I was so disappointed. I, but I also wanted to be grown up. What, why did you want to be a boy? What, what was... uh, because I wanted to um, have a sword, <laughs> armour and to fight dragons mm -hmm. and giants and be full of chivalry and honour mm -hmm. and bravery. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, like my grandfather, I wanted to work as a railway man. Mm -hmm. And in those days, there were no women working on the railways. But, but uh, <laughs> reading the book, your grandfather is a quite important person in, in your childhood. Yes. Uh, and he, he teach you how to fight. Yes. <laughs> Which is yes. Very, a very nice scene. <laughs> when I went to school, he said, no, lovey, um, this I will teach you how to fight mm -hmm. just in case uh, someone should um, be horrible to you. Mm -hmm. So his methods, his tactics are very successful, even when it's a big boy. Mm. 
<laughs> but you went back to school and you really tested the method. Oh, yes. So yes, uh, you did. really <laughs> went hard. Uh, and uh, what did you do? You have to get the big boy down to your level. And then you can. <laughs> It's a surprise. <laughs> it's a surprise. But but um, you became, uh, you realized that you 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 are you were uh, um, a girl, and and this is how you have to stay. Yes. But very early, you had a lot of fantasies, and and you read books, and you had kind of two lives, one inside of you, and uh, that's a picture I get when I read. I think so. Yes, because even before I could read. I used to get people to read to me and I have memorised uh, great chunks of the books. So I wasn't sure about reading, why you needed to do it. But then once I did learn to read, then everything that came my way, I just drank it in, mm -hmm. like food and drink. Mm -hmm. It, it, your childhood seems to be quite nice. You have your relatives and uh, you have your grandfather and, and so on. But then it became... Uh, it's a, a part of this book that is so painful that you could hardly read it. And it's when you uh, become... You are a student and uh, you feel that something is not well maybe with me. Yes. When I was 19 and a university student, uh, I began to realise there was something wrong physically. Um, I was so tired, I felt sick. Um, I wasn't sure what to say to the doctor, but I, I began to feel that my future was running away from me. Mm. Um, uh, and I just seemed so weak. And, well, then it was a long, long road mm. to the diagnosis um, when I was 27. Um, Nine I discovered years. I had mm. endometriosis. Mm. But by then, uh, a lot of damage was done. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't have children. And um, for those years were very hard because they pain, the, all the symptoms people said, really, you're imagining this. Mm. They didn't believe you? No, they didn't believe me. Mm. They, so they didn't investigate. Mm. They just said, uh, you are um, too stressed, you are too ambitious, mm. uh, you should go and work in a shop, then you'll be OK. <laughs> and during all these years, you had to eat a lot of psychopharmaca that you really didn't need? Well, no, there was nothing I could really take to help me, you mm. know. Um, I didn't... I didn't find much relief from the symptoms, although eventually I found a, a doctor who was sympathetic and said, oh, well, we can relieve this pain. But he didn't ask why mm. does she have this mm. pain. But you see, I was grateful. Mm. So I, I took the pills. But also people said, uh, you know, you need tranquilizers, uh, you need um, antidepressants. Mm. These things I tried for a very little while, but then I said to myself, no, no, it's, it's not in my head, mm. it's in my body. When you looked it up in a book, you Eventually, were the one that yeah, really discovered what I found what myself, mm. but you had to go to a medical textbook mm. because for the uh, ordinary person, there was nothing. Mm. There was nothing written in the language uh, that was accessible. Mm. So, I, in the end, I had to diagnose myself. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of things in this, uh, in your life and in the book, uh, and, and we could sit for hours and, and talk about it, but I want people to read it, of course, in you too. But it's a way of writing that you immediately feel 
that you're kind of um, you're holding the reader's hand, sort of, and you're kind of entering your world. It's a very so. nice way of uh, writing. You see, I feel very close to myself as I was in early childhood. Mm. Um, before I went to school, before I could read, so she's with me. And then the person in between sometimes seems like a stranger. Mm -hmm. But I can very easily go back into early childhood mm. and write from inside it. So it's not a miserable book. It has serious mm. things to say, but I hope it's enjoyable for mm. the reader because of the child's view mm. of the world. But is it was the the illness the endometriosis also um, because it's a very painful yes. uh, illness and disease uh, was it like a driving force for you to keep on writing and keep on writing just to concentrate and focus on something else than the pain? Well, it was really the fact that by the time I left university. I had certain ambitions, you know. I wanted to be a lawyer, I wanted to be a politician. And it was as if the doors were closing mm -hmm. because I didn't feel I had the strength. Mm. I got a job, I, I worked as a social worker for a while, then as a saleswoman. But in my evenings, weekends, I was writing because I thought, I want to do something in the world, but it must be something under my control mm -hmm. that uh, I, if the illness gets worse, I can still do it because uh, you can write when you are okay. Mm -hmm. If you are very bad, you can stop, you know, you control it. Mm -hmm. Not many careers are like that. Mm -hmm. So it's lucky and me. it was lucky for all the readers too uh, because it's a, a, a success that is enormous I mean with this especially these books that uh, uh, are yeah. about uh, Henry VIII mm -hmm. and his life and you kind of get so close to these people there are every day in you get into their everyday life and yes. and their feelings so history is not like history in school it's really that you're there you're yeah. part of it these are people i know mm -hmm. you know them i know them how do you know uh, them <laughs> uh, lots and lots of reading and listening mm -hmm. uh, as as it were um reading their letters, hearing them, um, looking at their pictures. And you kind of see that yes. things are yes. like, uh, I mean, during these days. I'm um, angry that they're dead. And <laughs> I want to uh, bring them back mm -hmm. so I can talk mm -hmm. to them. And but would them. you ask uh, Henry uh, VIII? Oh. Uh, so many questions, but the main thing is really um, just as with a person who is living, uh, first of all, you let them talk and then you watch them and mm. then you think of the questions. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, but I feel, uh, you see, to me, it doesn't matter that they're dead, they're just very real. So I hope I can take the reader there mm -hmm. so it's not like a history lesson and it's not like what you learned at school, mm -hmm. but it is founded on good sources. Mm -hmm. The history is good. I take it very seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, I really am impelled to try to sweep away all the prejudice mm -hmm. and all the accumulation mm. of misunderstanding and go back to the sources of the time and try to build the picture. Mm. Uh, would you say, for those who hasn't read them yet, they have something nice to look forward to. It's Thomas Cromwell that you yes. really focus on. and mm. uh, But it, it's also a character, really. Yes, yeah, Thomas Cromwell was 
the son of a blacksmith, and he rose to be a nobleman, to be very wealthy, and to be the great minister, a uh, right-hand man of Henry VIII. So that's the question, how did he do that? Mm -hmm. In those times when the king's advisors were usually noblemen or churchmen, where did he come from? What kind of man could do this? So it's three, three books mm -hmm. about his life. Uh, two of them are already written. The third one I'm in the process of now. Mm -hmm. And everybody's looking forward to <laughs> see you. what's going to happen. But it's also a TV series. Yeah. Um, and it was a tremendous success. Yeah. Uh, it is now being shown in, uh, in Britain. Mm -hmm. uh, there has been a two stage plays mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the stage plays were in London last summer. We are going to New York mm -hmm. in the spring. Uh, the TV series is quite separate. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a six part series and I believe it will be shown in Sweden. It will. In, yeah. In, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, it, it's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, beautiful to look at, all shot by natural light or candlelight. Mm. None of it is made in the mm. studio. I'm so glad that you came to visit and uh, the book is now uh, Skuggan och ett liv in Swedish and it's about your story but mm -hmm. I hope people also, those who haven't read uh, about Henry V and mm -hmm. Thomas Cromwell will read again. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you so much.